Um, looks like this is a blank file that they've started, and in this case, it's a 2D file. Um, so this is normally what the designers are going to start with. Is they're going to have a 2D file, and then they're going to go in and reference in your terrain model. So you're going to go. Uh, let's. Um, yeah, we'll stay in. Let's go to the Open Roads modeling workflow. And then we're going to go into our home tab and we're going to under attach tools we're going to open up our references dialog and then when we attach uh, you want to be inside of using and editing terrain models folder and then you're looking for um, a search file <coughs> Before you go in and just attach it, um, we're going to select it here, and then over on the right, we're going to choose interactive so that we can actually change some settings about it when we bring it in. Then click open. And then once you get the disk dialog, um, so if you look at the model, we only have one model, and that's because this terrain model was created in a 3D file, and that's what you want. Otherwise, when a designer goes in and uses this, they're going to have to manually go in and attach the default 3D model to each view, which we don't really want to have to do. Um, so we're just going to be bringing in the default model. We're going to use Coincident World. I'll leave the nesting. I don't really need any nesting, so I'll set that to none. And we're not going to change anything else in here, so I'll go ahead and just click OK. Now I'm going to do a fit view, and you're going to see your terrain model. If I go in and select that and look at the feature definition, it's using existing triangles. So it's, that's where the um, settings for what features are displaying are coming from. So I want to just back up a little bit and just show you kind of where all of that is stemming from. Um, let's see here. Actually, this will be best when we get into your brain file. I'll show you that. Well, um, now let me show you here. Okay, so for this, you can just watch my screen. So I'm going to go into my Explorer, and then underneath my Open Road Standards, um, so this is anything I've used in this file. So when you first start a blank file, this is everything in the blue standards is really blank. And then as you go and you use feature definitions or annotation groups, really anything you see in your standards list down here, terrain filters, what it's really doing is it's going to go and look in your workspace environment, find what it needs, and go copy it into your file as a local copy. So what that does for you is it means that you no longer have to give somebody your workspace to view a file. You know, you can just give them the file and it has all of the features and levels and whatnot already embedded in that file. It also gives you a working copy to make edits. So if you need to deviate from your workspace, um, create a new element template, create a new level, anything like that, it can be done directly in the file. You don't have to get your CAD manager to do it for you. Um, so I don't believe we have anything in here because all we've done is we've referenced at this point. Um, but what I'm going to do over here on the side is I'm just going to bring in a feature definition uh, just so I can have it over here to play around with. <coughs> um, so give me just a minute, I'm going to draw just a kind of a dummy terrain over here. Um, complex by PI. <coughs> I won't worry about the feature definition for that. in a 2D file, this is this really a good example of why you don't want to create your terrains in a 2D file. I mean, you can, but the ter even if you create your terrain in your, in your 2D file, it only lives in the 3D model space. You're not gonna, it's not going to exist over here in our regular default model. So if I wanted to see my terrain over here in my plan view, I would really have to, over here in my plan view, I'd have reference in that default 3D in order to see it, which would be 
here. Um, but the only reason I did this is just so I could copy in some feature definitions. So I want to show you just kind of like how the feature definition is feeding into your terrain and what it's controlling. So I'm going to start up here in the feature definitions. And right now I'm looking at, I assigned a proposed boundary. So that's what got copied in here. And if I go over here and look, um, getting a volume option, that's a very important uh, piece of this. Um, so proposed boundary, it's set to a design terrain model. Um, and then the symbology is what's controlling what it looks like. So what features are displaying, what levels they're going to be on. So I'm going to follow that down our, our tree here. So if I go into now my feature symbologies, I'm going to look at my surface feature symbologies go into my proposed boundary, and then that's calling an element template. The element template's the brains of everything. Um, so really the feature symbology is just the pointer to the element template. So now if I go and take a look at this element template, you got the same process here. So any element template that's used in your file gets copied from the workspace and it gets copied in up here. But now that it's copied up here, I have a working um, copy of it. So I can either create a copy and make some changes, or I could directly make changes to that element template itself. Um, so if I look at this one, I've got um, the level that it's being you know, assigning. So here is just my master level assignment on terrain exterior. And then I'm choosing which um, features are being displayed. So what calculated features. So this is just a proposed boundary. So the only thing I have on is going to be uh, my boundary shape, which just comes on at default. Let me go ahead and expand all of these. And you're never going to be able to turn that boundary off. So we're going to have that one on. Um, if I were to go and look at some of these other ones, let's see, probably the common. So here's existing contours. Um, you'll see that the contours are toggled off, everything's toggled off, everything else is toggled off. Um, if I look at triangles, my triangles are on, contours are off. So we're setting these settings in the element template and then they're being called by the feature definition. And that's how it knows which features to display. Now we can override these um, settings here after placement like we just did. We could say, you know, override the reference and we can toggle on whatever we want to see. But anytime that terrain gets reprocessed for any reason, it's just going to reread the feature definition. So if we truly want it to like kind of stay static in the file to the symbology that we choose, instead of just going in and changing it here, um, so if I can remember here, override the symbology, you know, I could turn off the triangles here. But what I really want to do is I would go and choose a different element template to override it with. Um, so that means I would go under terrain. Um, you know, maybe I want this to be contours instead. And then now if it reprocesses, it's going to reread that element template as opposed to, um, you know, just rereading the feature definition. A lot of times you might want to change your intervals for your contours. Um, so your, your workspace is going to have some defaults in there for you already. Um, but if you want to, I mean, you can go into the settings here and I can go down into my calculated features. I can choose my contours and I can choose what that major and that minor interval is going to look like. Um, but again, if I want to do something that's going to, re anytime it reprocesses and it rereads the element template, what I'd really want to do, um, let me go back in here. Yeah, if you select your train, we've already created that one. Um, so once we use that element template, it should have copied it in here, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, so if you go into your element templates now and click on manage, And then you come over here and expand your display terrain model DGN and click on that existing contours element template. Um, what we're going to do, I'm going to create a copy of this. So I'm just going to right click that element template and I'm going to go ahead and paste it right back in here. 
And then it's in the set, these are the settings that we can set those intervals. And in addition to that, we all can also set the symbology of what it looks like. Um, so if I go to like my minor contours, I can choose by level or um, I can choose a different level for it or override the symbology. Um, actually, I believe this level is for the text only. I'm not sure if that's actually changing the level of the contours during a plot. I think it's just going to be the level of the contours during the uh, while we're in here. Let's see if I can't get that back over. Um, yeah, let me go. Now I'll just hit that off. This is also how we're choosing whether we want to display the text and at what interval, you know, what text style that others' elevations are going to be on. Same thing for our triangles. We can choose the symbology for those, the flow arrows. Uh, my triangle vertices. So all that's being controlled through the element template. All right, so if I go back just to my contours, maybe, you know, instead of a one to five, um, I can do something different. So I'm gonna do a different interval here. So for my major, I'll do like 20. Maybe, I'll turn my number lock off, I suppose. Um, and then I'm gonna just type in anything you want there. I'm gonna do two. And then I would rename this to whatever it is I changed about it. So whether it's a display that I changed or if it's, you know, something for my contours, all I'm doing is I'm making another element template live in my file with the settings that I want. And then in my terrain model settings, now that I've created that new element template, now I can use that as my template override. So. I think I set my contours are now on just default here. Um, so I changed those. And then I also changed the interval. Now I'm going to go back to a boundary. Actually, I'm going to go back to none here. We're just going to play around with the uh, source features. All right, so we're going to just select none for the template override. <coughs> And these displays that you see, they're going to be controlled per view. Um, so notice in my 3D view, I still have it set to triangles. So I'm just overriding the display in, in the actual view itself. And so I'm going to turn my contours off here, just have my boundary. And then over here on the right side in my 3D model, you're going to have your triangles turned on. So it's using the triangle feature definition, so there's really not much we have to do. <coughs> But if you want to use the thematic height, or if you want to do the aqua planing, um, anything like that, it's going to have you're going to have to have the triangles on so that it can create a solid from the from the terrain model or shade in the triangles, so to speak. So now in our display styles, uh, I'm going to just do a long left click right here to get this drop down. I'm going to choose thematic and then go into height. And you can edit this legend. Um, so if I go into my display style editor here, you can create a copy of these. Um, so I can create a copy up here, paste it in. And maybe I want to make some changes for a particular project. Maybe I'm in a flatter area, so I want to have some smaller ranges for my, my legend. So now I can come up here, over here on the right side. And edit what that's going to look like. Um, so you can choose kind of your levels here of what your elevation ranges are going to be like. Or you have some presets that they have. And then if you go over to the legend tab, you can see what your minimum max values are going to be for each one as you set those. And then you would just want to save that and then you could go and assign that as your, as your display style. Um, there's some other ones in here, you just want to play around with them. There's the slope. Um, so that's going to have a legend based off of the slope of the triangles. Um, you can also do, let's see, aqua planes. see where that one's at. There it is. It's under thematic as well. 
Um, what aqua planning does is it's going to show you like where your pond is going to be for water. So before you use the displace dial, you actually have to first start over here. And let's see where it's at. in the terrain tab and you would choose the aqua planning um, so then you can locate the terrain model to be analyzed you're going to choose your you know the formula there's some different formulas that are preloaded in here um, you would choose your rainfall intensity and that's going to show you like where your water is going to pond on your terrain model um, so that's good. running the tool you're going to see that but it's not until you change the display style to aqua planning that you're actually going to see that um, that change um, based off the legend. So then you have a legend based off of that, of the depth. Um, let's see here. Okay, let's go back to our triangles here. So I'm just going to go back to a wireframe, or if you want to see the more smooth look, we're going to go to the illustration um, in more lighting. Now we're going to go in and start creating terrain models. Yeah. So before we leave this file, does anybody have any questions?